Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Tyrod Taylor's Bills going up against Dalton's Bengals. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Buffalo Bills. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Out now comes Andy Dalton and company as we're going to see the Bengals' first drive on offense in just a second. But against Green Bay, went to overtime, lost, and scored their first TD of the year. So not a win, but some positives for Cincinnati. And they needed anything to be positive that they could take out of that because going into it, no one gave them a chance to go to Green Bay and win, and they took them to the absolute limit at Lambeau, and Andy Dalton really picked up his play. Brand new coordinator, got the ball out of his hands quickly, dispersed it to the receivers downfield, and he looked like the Andy Dalton we had seen most of his career. They go play action here on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. And now it's second down. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. When you're right on the verge of being a top 10 overall offense in the NFL, you would think that things are pretty good for your team. But the Bengals want to improve. They were 13th in rushing. And for a team that wants to run the football first, last, and always, that's an area that they're trying to jump up in 2017. Second down following the incompletion. Now the rookie from Oklahoma, it's Joe Mixon. And he powers his way up past the 30. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. If Joe Mixon plays up to his potential, Cincinnati got a draft steal getting him in the second round. Strong runner. He's built like a rock, 230 pounds. Yeah, and he moves like a little guy. All right, He's one of those players that you can use in any situation. Short yardage runner, heck, you want to get him to the perimeter, he can take off and beat you with his speed and definitely catches the ball out of the backfield. He's got his man here. It's green. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Dalton to Green for a Cincinnati first. You think about the great tandems that we've had this decade in the NFL. Think about Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Brady, and Gronk. But look, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green, they have to rank in there, don't they? Yeah, and two guys that came from the same draft class. A.J. Green in the first round, Andy Dalton in the second round. And what they've meant to the Cincinnati Bengals franchise has been everything. A lot of playoff appearances. Play fake. Here's Dalton. And he's got the hook up to Brandon LaFell. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, gets stronger. But the best part about him, he's always been accurate. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Dalton with a give here to Mixon. 
And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Quickly now, a look at the Buffalo defense. This is defense that's always carried itself with a swagger, and one of the things they take great pride in, rushing the passer. They were six against the pass in 2016. Have to shore up their run defense, though. Just 29th. That's quite a surprise, considering the athletes they have on that side of the ball. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. Heck of a move and then brought down near the 23. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Everyone's looking for a bargain in the NFL draft, and I don't think anyone got a bigger one than Cincinnati getting Joe Mixon in the second round. He keeps moving east. He was born in California, then to Oklahoma, and now finding a home in the Queen City. And I don't think it'll take him too terribly long to have a real impact on that city in terms of how he plays the game, because he can run it, catch it, he can do it all. Now Mixon, and he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Well, that's the way you want to get an opening drive going, right? Because so often it's a tone setter. And I think even better when you're able to pick it up and convert with a running play. Because the last thing you want to do is play what I call rocket football. One, two, three, kick. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Dalton operating in the red zone now. And it's caught. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Now Green. Oh, staying on the ground. Let's hope he's all right. We'll check on his status when we get back. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Here's a run with Mixon into a mass of bodies, and I think they held him out. They did. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Dalton throwing on second down. Got a man, it's LaFell for the Bengal touchdown. Brandon LaFell, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. Those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. kick this one away. 
Here's Taiwan Jones on the return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. As we prepare to see Buffalo on offense, we see Tyrod Taylor there. What he did against Denver in that win last week was great. Charles, 20 at 26, two touchdowns, no picks. They like his talent. They like his leadership. This team plays for him. But I think what head coach Sean McDermott really is seeking from Tyrod Taylor is what we saw last week in the game. A guy takes care of the football, makes good decisions, key throws at the time he has to make them. He's 20 of 26 in the ball game and uses his legs effectively as well. If they get that from Tyrod Taylor, they're going to be tough to beat. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. It's complete to his tight end, Charles Clay. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that open things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Here's the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 51 yards. And the Bills are an extra point away from tying the football game. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Steven Hauschka for the point after. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Nixon gets the nod to start the drive. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Again, it's Mixon. And he powers his way up past the 30. 
He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. You'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. And Dalton to throw. And that is incomplete. But he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep is Kalen Clay. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. The Bengals defense gearing up as they take the field. And they gave up a touchdown last drive. You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that. And, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway. That's for sure. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. On the offensive side, there's a look at the Buffalo starters. Well, Sean McCoy, great in week one, weeks two and three, though. He hasn't run the football very effectively. But you have to figure, no matter who he plays against, their first mission is going to be, let's shut down, slow down, take away LaShawn McCoy. And that's happened in the last two weeks. We say 26 carries, 30 yards total. That's uncharacteristic. But they need to find a way to spring him loose because otherwise they're putting it all on the shoulders of their quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, and that may be too big of a load to ask. They want to be more. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Carl Lawson in there to get him for a loss of five. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sick. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Open man is Holmes. And he's eventually brought down, but not before he reaches the 39, just shy of the 40. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Defensive starters now for Cincinnati. The Cincinnati defense is well respected around the league, but they didn't play to their standard in 2016. If you just look at the pure numbers, ended up 17th overall in total defense. But in the tough division that they're in, the AFC North, they have to be better against the run. They ranked just 21st in 2016. That's got to change for them to make the improvement they want in 2017. Second down now after the incompletion. Here we go. One, nine, nine. 
Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. McCoy's got the first down and more. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. For McCoy in the last seven years, five of them over 1,000 yards. Underrated in how strong he is through the hole, but the best part of his game, open field, where he makes a whole lot of people miss. In 2016, he was seventh in the league in rushing yardage. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Well, that run wasn't very successful. They did have a big one on the previous play. So you get the sense that the offense is probing around, trying to find the ones that are going to work. And when they find them, they'll keep coming back to them. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Now Taylor completes it to Powell, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Third and two, now Taylor, and he's got his man. It's the tight end, Clay. Taylor to his big tight end, Clay, for the Buffalo first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Fresh set of downs here. Here we go. They go back to the ground with McCoy. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Come on, let's go. Look, not, not. <laughs> Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no game, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. On fourth down, Sean McDermott trots the field goal unit out there. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And the Bills have taken the lead. Maybe an anxious moment or two when the ball was on its way, but he does find a way to curl it in. Oh, yeah. That one definitely hugged the left upright, but he got it to go. To the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. 
This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll start here with a give to Mixon, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. It's second down. Dalton looking. and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Kyle Williams able to collapse the pocket and drop it for a loss of a yard. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with the football to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And he's going to go down again. Jerry Hughes, he's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's Kevin Huber now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, <laughs> right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Holmes. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there on 20 yards. down carry here for McCoy and he'll take this forward for two maybe three but we do have a flag down and they're already marching backward Holding offense. that time the right guard sending him backwards and so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now depending on situations you can get the bulky guy the fast guy no matter what though you can't hold them Come on, let's go. Brand 
Taylor now off the bootleg. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Man, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Taylor with a give to McCoy. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Third and long, it's Taylor. He's going to float this one deep right side. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Alex Erickson, deep for Cincinnati. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. Fair catch called for. No gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. It'll go as just a 15-yard punt. And the Bengals take possession. Here's A.J. Green as he gets set to go again on offense. You would have to think they're going to make it more of a priority to get him the football. You're losing here in the second quarter, and he's been really quiet. I think all we have to do, and it's too bad we can't actually see the actual play sheet now from the coordinator, because he's looking down at that and saying, okay, do I put him in different spots? Do I try and isolate him? What routes do I run? You're exactly right. They've got to get the ball in his hands and get their offense kick-started. He does have the two catches, but pretty quiet so far. A first down throw coming for Dalton. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. I know I'm not giving up credit to the defenders because that pass was incomplete. But come on, it was A.J. Green. I always expect him to come up with the ball. Yeah, on those deep routes especially, even on incompletions, it's fun to watch him run those routes. Uh, it certainly is, but he eats up ground, and he usually goes up and gets it. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 12 yards that time, and a Cincinnati first down. So much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Now they run with Mixon, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Second down, Dalton. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. Dalton here from the gun. And this 
this is going to be incomplete. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. Online, but off the crossbar, no good. A long-range effort denied three points at the very end. All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. Out comes Zay Jones with the rest of his offense as they take the field. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you, that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. They'll start the drive with a carry by McCoy. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. bootleg Taylor and he's going to be out of bounds but able to take it inside the 40 yard line 16 yards there and the Bills have a first down Zay Jones a second round pick from East Carolina some thought could have been a first round pick from East Carolina high volume guy at East Carolina I mean the big time catch 158 of them in 2016 and he's an NFL legacy his father a longtime linebacker in the league now out of the gun fighting his way down to about the 35 yard line two yards on the carry there it'll be second down that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game on second down Taylor And some room to roam now. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. It's an eight-yard pickup, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Offense on third down tonight. They've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Come on, let's go. To throw is Taylor. Off the bootleg. Powell on the catch. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. stopped just shy of the goal line right around the two. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. 
And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. touchdown grab and the Bills will extend their lead a good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback especially when you're able to create some mismatches sometimes they work against a linebacker sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back but when they find it they go to it and it often results in touchdowns Hauschka now for the extra point It's good to make it 17-7. So that drives seven plays in length, and it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. On the return, it's Alex Erickson. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Jeremy Hill now gearing up to go again as he marches back onto the field. And a lot of times you talk about establishing the ground game, probably something they need to do more of here losing in the second quarter. When you're riding your best horse, you've got to lather him up. The best running backs I've ever talked to, they've all said the exact same thing to me. I'll even break a good sweat until I get to 20 carries. You're full of good wisdom. Let's see if they can get him into the game more now. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. Green with a catch left side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a Bengal first down. A.J. Green last year, a career low in yardage of his six NFL seasons. It was the first one he didn't post 1,000 yards. I was there against Buffalo when he pulled a hamstring early in the game and missed the rest of the season. So that's why the numbers were down. A healthy A.J. Green, we know what we're going to get. Big time production. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? now Dalton he's gonna let this one go deep oh that was dangerous threw it into coverage almost picked but instead they'll keep it on second down they may be snapping a ball near the goal line but all you're thinking defensively keep them out of the end zone force the incompletion force them into going for three and not giving up six
So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Dalton with a give to Hill. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Third down from the gun, Dalton. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. They didn't have a ton of yards to pick up on that third down, but there was no way they were playing that one safe. They decided to take that one downtown. They must have felt that they had a big play that was waiting for them. Unfortunately, it was incomplete. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. And they have had success on the ground, really as a team, doing well carrying the football. So maybe a little less pressure on his shoulders as the quarterback. Any pressure he's carrying right now, that's self-inflicted, right? He's taking it on. He doesn't need to. Continue to do what you just said. Let everyone else carry the football. That's been effective. Don't have to worry about him throwing the ball in all the situations now. That's got to be a good feeling if he just relaxes and lets it keep coming to him. Yeah, and relax and enjoy the second quarter lead right now. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Now Taylor to throw on second down. He's got a man complete. It's Clay. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. here on first down. Bearing one out deep for Holmes here. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Oh man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here we go. Taylor going to throw again. Taylor hit. He lost the football. Cincinnati after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry.
The Bills on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and forever. Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. And a fair catch is called for. He will take it in to give his guy some excellent field position here. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat, make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Dalton, first and 10. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. <laughs> Throwing again. Dalton. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Joe Mixon there out of the backfield. And it's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. To throw on third down, Dalton. incomplete not only was that a three and out it was their third straight incompletion on this drive and they didn't even think about trying to run the football now they have to give it up here's Kevin Huber now he's been one of their few bright spots so far His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. They've sort of epitomized balance. I mean, he's thrown the ball pretty well. They've run the ball well. Got to be pretty happy over on that sideline. Takes a lot of pressure off, doesn't it? As much as those guys back there want to throw the ball around and be the focal point, when you're able to run it well, and hold the defense back from their pass rush. It allows you to throw it as well as we're seeing so far in this game. And yeah, now they'll be looking to add to their lead here in the second quarter. On first and ten, it's Taylor. Holmes has got it complete. A really nice gain of 25 yards.
They'll throw on first down with Taylor. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, that play gives us a quick breather here. I want to look ahead to week four of the NFL season. Carolina at New England. I'm curious if the Panthers can break out of the little funk they're in. A little bit of a clunker at home against New Orleans. Many thought they would win that one. They're trying to get Cam Newton going. And, of course, he's got to go take on Tom Terrific in, in the New England <laughs> Patriots right there in their home turf. How about Detroit at Minnesota? Big NFC North battle. Both teams 2-1 and one in the early going. That seems to be an excellent matchup. And flip it over to the AFC. Tennessee at Houston, a monster AFC South game here in the early going. The Bills passing game, getting them down the field. They've got another first down. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. Going to drop this off to McCoy. Complete. <laughs> And he's brought down after a good game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Oh, let's go. One, nine, to throw again is Taylor. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go. One, nine. One, nine. On second down, here's Taylor. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Charles Clay as tight end, and it'll bring up third down. Back-to-back, -back, great plays defensively. You get the sack on first and goal. A great job in coverage there. All of a sudden, they're looking at third and goal from further back than when they started. And the really good play callers look ahead and down in distance sequence. Now he's got to backtrack a little bit and go maybe off his play sheet to try and dial something up here. here. On third and goal, Taylor. And that is incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to 
Spent the last six years as the kicker for the Seattle Seahawks, place where they called him House Money. Now in Buffalo, conditions somewhat similar, I would say, between Seattle and Buffalo. Well, Seattle, you get a lot of rain. Buffalo, when the season gets a little later, you get a lot of cold weather. A lot of cold weather, maybe even a little bit of snow. to the made field goal. Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Bengals getting set to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. First and ten for Dalton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Well, Parker, I got to get your thoughts while we have a second on the end of that Falcons-Lions game. People were shocked that that Golden Tate touchdown was called a touchdown, was overturned. Were you surprised? I was surprised because normally they stick with the original call unless they find what they call indisputable visual evidence, and they felt like they did. They thought Tate's knee was down before the ball broke the goal line. I think they were right about that, but the killer was there was still time left on the clock, yeah, so Detroit the thought they were going to get another, another opportunity. But because of what had happened there, the rules said there had to be a 10-second runoff, which left no time on the clock. And you know who felt the worst about making that announcement? The referee. Yeah. They never want to be the ones that feel like they actually decided a game, but by rule they had to do it, and that ended it without Detroit getting their last shot. Just brutal for the folks in Motown. So here we go, first and 10 now. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And the grab by Croft. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. Now Dalton with a first and ten. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Bullock will put this one through. And that cuts into the deficit. It's now 20 to 10. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25.
And with time running down, they go down to a knee. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Bengals trail at home at halftime. The Bills have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's roll the highlights. Midway through the first quarter. Dalton's going to get the hookup with his receiver, Brandon LaFell. And it's caught for the touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. Now first and ten, McCoy is going to head outside to the right, and he'll go in for the score, as that evens the score at 7-7. Seven, seven. Bills have it midway through the second. O'Leary's by himself here, and he counts off the sixth play drive with the score. As they move out in front, 10-7. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Here we go. Brand 98. Brand A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Again, now it's Taylor on second and 10. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up a third down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here we go! And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Hey, hey, here we go. 
Looking to throw on second down. Taylor. It's caught. Reception by Holmes. And a nice gain of 21 yards. fake here on first down he's going to loft one deep left side here that's going to be knocked away and incomplete Zay Jones was the intended receiver and that'll bring up second down I remember a coach told me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL corner is like the Autobahn everybody just flying by and these corners have been really busy in this game although they got it done on the last play on the last play yes but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively Second down following the incompletion. Let's go. One, nine, nine. Now McCoy able to spin free. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. And third quarter here, you've got the lead. This is where that strong run game can really benefit you. Stayed in bounds there, kept the clock going. I like all the points you just made there. And if you throw the football and it's incomplete, now you've stopped the clock and you've helped out the guys on the other side of the ball. So keep it in the hands of those runners. Keep moving it. Keep grinding the clock. Here's Taylor to throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> the drive will commence with a run by Mixon, and he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. Second down. Offense behind the sticks here. Second and 13. the gun it's Dalton and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds give him eight on the play and just like that it's third down I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays and on this challenge the refs have to take a peek and see whether or not the receiver was able to dot the eye with both feet while making sure that he possesses the football all the way through the catch
to review the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Bengals on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Dalton, airing one out for Boyd. He's got a man complete. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. Now that play will end up on the highlights and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time and allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. Now the offense lining up first and 10. From the gun, Dalton. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. draw to Mixon and an alley to run and he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a Bengal first down a pickup of 11. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. They usually know it as quicker than fast. In this case we've got a guy who's quick and fast and he used it to great advantage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. So the offense readies for a second and four. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll try and run for it. Here's Hill. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out of a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They stick on the ground on first down with Hill. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. On second down, Hill. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. 
Back to back stops make it third and ten. And while there is no gain on that run we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time though where the identity may have to go out the window and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Third down a shot here for Dalton. Looking for Boyd and he's got him. Touchdown Bengals. Tyler Boyd a 15 yard touchdown grab and the Bengals have got it back to a one score game. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Here's Bullock now for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it ends with a Bengals score. kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. First down, it's Taylor. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Play action now, Taylor. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Second down now after the incompletion. This is McCoy. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Third down, Taylor. Taylor hit. He lost the football. And the Bengals have recovered it. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. And out now here 
here come the Bengals. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Let's see what Dalton can do after the fumble recovery. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and it's going to be a first down. Well done. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. First down throw coming for Dalton. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make it second down. Second down now after the pass completion. Dalton here from the gun. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, so many times defensive backs get caught playing the man rather than the football. But not in this case. That's an excellent play. Did exactly what you're supposed to do. Attack the football and help break up the pass. And yep, as a result, knocks it down. And the Bengals on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and eight. And it'll be Dalton again. And that's complete to Croft. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. So the offense has it, six-yard line, first and goal. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action, throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Looking for Boyd, and he's got him. Touchdown, Bengals. Tyler Boyd with now his second touchdown of this third quarter. And the Bengals are going to jump back in front. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even insult the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. And that will 
that'll make this a four-point game. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. out now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Taylor on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. The Bills have the football, but they trail here as we begin quarter number four. Zay Jones that time. That'll bring up second down. Come on, let's go! Right second and ten, it's Taylor again. Man open right side, it's the tight end clay. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A very solid gain of 27. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the round. And now a first down following that long gain. Here we go. What not? What not? Again, it's Taylor. That is caught at the seven. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Walter Powell, 37 yards. And the Bills have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. 
The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. Dumps it off to Mixon. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Mixon. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. First and ten. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It'll be a gain of nine. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Just one yard to go here on second down. now to pass and his throw is incomplete Tyler Boyd the former Pitt Panther was the target and it's third and short well they're slinging it and then there's one you got to put a timer on huh I mean that one came in hot that yeah, came in hot but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete Hill and he'll get this into enemy territory but not by much as he's down to the 48 he needed two he got one and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard this late in the game Charles I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space maybe too far for your field goal kicker I I'm like the old rule Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. They'll try and run with Mixon. And they are going to stop him on fourth and one as they'll wind up going backwards. Denied on fourth down. 
is Joe Mixon. And this defense will take over right at midfield. Here now a look at LaShawn McCoy. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case... Now they'll try and run the sweep to McCoy. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. 20! And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. It's a big run there by McCoy. 43 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Mike Tolbert, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Bills will add on to their lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. And he'll bang that one through. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. They go play action here on first down. Green's got it over the middle. A good pick up there on 20 yards. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. On 
first down. Dalton boards the target and he has it over the middle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. The completion good for three and it's second down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Seven yards to go on second down. Operating from the gun, Dalton. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Another chance for Dalton. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Big fourth down here. It's Dalton. He had it and dropped it. And the Bills are going to take over in excellent field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur so they can't let that dream go just yet they have to get stout on defense here yeah right now really hoping for a turnover on first and ten it's Taylor wide open receiver complete and he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Let's go! Out of the gun, it's Taylor. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down, it's McCoy. He spins free and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. The Bills on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and five. Come on, let's go! Taylor 
are going to run the option right. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense, because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. First and ten for Dalton. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Dalton throwing on second down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. And again, Andy Dalton to throw. And the grab by Croft. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Oh, and now movement and a whistle. And they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. 
They were going for it on fourth and inches, now fourth and five. Yeah, everything had built to a crescendo, hadn't it? Fourth and inches, I mean, we were coming out of our chairs up here. Now on fourth and five, you've got to think about whether you want to go for it or not. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They'll go again to McCoy. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. They'll set up the screen here to Tolbert. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. So the offense has it first and 10. Here we go. Now a 20th carry here for McCoy. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bills will extend their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. So they're going to go for two. They'll try and run it with McCoy. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench.
Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now Dalton with a first and ten. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that'll make it a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. ike has been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Here's Dalton throwing the out route incomplete. It's Boyd. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they march off another 15 against your squad. First down, Dalton, and pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Second down here after the incomplete pass. to throw again. Dalton. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Give him 17 at a Cincinnati first down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. On first and 10, Dalton. That is caught at the 7. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Ryan Hewitt, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Bengals are able to cut into this lead. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Now Bullock to add the extra point. Cut the deficit to 12. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with a Bengals score. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. Down the numbers, there he goes. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done slim, 
and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And now out come the Bills. They got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Again, it's McCoy, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Now a handoff looking right. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Colton Schmidt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is away, and it's a high kick. Hit pretty well. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Obviously a tough spot here. They need a lot of luck to win this game, but still a small chance. They've got to make sure they get the ball to the sidelines, get out of bounds, preserve clock. On first down, Dalton. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Kyle Williams in there to take him down, and the clock will run. Get up and spike it right at 40 seconds to go. Third 
Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? And this is going to be incomplete. So fourth and 15, but the offense is staying out there to go for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's got his man here. It's green. Give him 17 at a Cincinnati first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. And now down to 24 seconds after the spike. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. This will be Dalton again. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. A Bengal first down, Dalton hitting LaFell. Working the sideline there, good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. And here comes play number six on this drive. A first down throw coming for Dalton. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. They did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And on second and 10 now. Throwing again. Dalton. He's going to let it fly. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. Got to be wary of throwing an interception here because the defense knows they're going to get tested deep. That's why they're going to put a couple of extra guys back there to try and prevent that. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter here, trying to preserve the lead. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. And it'll be Dalton again. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Get your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.